So what is your what is your background look like? How did you find yourself at Collabora? How did you find yourself working on audio stuff? Like what what brought you here? Um, good question. <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah, I started um I guess I started back in school, I guess. I was just curious with writing programs. I I found myself trying my first Linux distribution out of a DVD that came with a magazine and it was saying Mandrake Linux something. And I was like, okay, what's that? That's that's some kind of software. Like I have to install it. Because I was I was always a curious child. I was looking at especially when it comes to computers, I was uh, downloading a lot of software on Windows at the time and I was testing it. And uh, I just wanted to, to to learn anything new that was out there. So mm -hmm. I installed that. Didn't understand how initially, but yeah, I installed that. I broke my Windows setup, obviously. <laughs> and I had to learn how to get through that and how to use it. And I, I learned quite fast, actually. I, I was able to get back on the internet with, with Mandrake Linux and, and find my way there. And then I realized that, you know, this environment is open source. That, that was a revolution to me. I didn't know that this, this was a thing, right? And what open source allowed me was to be able to write my own code and, and contribute there and change things and make them the way I liked. Um, so I got into programming basically by playing with a software called Qt Designer. That was the, the Qt, uh, yeah, the, the Qt Toolkit Designer um, that was allowing me to, to to write user interfaces, and it had a side thing where you could connect actions from the buttons to code, and that code was written in C plus plus. So I started learning C++ through C. Initially, I, I learned C. I, I downloaded a book. I learned C. Um, and then I, well, I, I started writing C in the C++ functions and, and started discovering what C++ is like, right? And I was finding the differences. And all of that was in school, right? I was still in high school. Um, that led me to uh, computer science. Um, studies uh, at the university, University of Crete. And while I was studying there, I was still investigating you know, this whole Linux environment thing. And I started contributing to KDE because that came naturally after learning Qt, I was contributing to KDE, initially looking at bug fixes. Like, so I was, I was basically the QA guy. I was, I was uh, going through tickets and I was trying to reproduce them and give feedback to users. Um, but occasionally I would see something that looked like I could fix easily. So I started writing small patches as well and, and figuring out how I can make changes. And that led me in, in a Google Summer, Google Summer of Code project uh, in 2009, where Basically, one of the guys that I was interacting with a lot on IRC at the time in the KD community, he brought that idea to me. And the idea was to write a video call client for KD. At the time we were doing, it was a huge thing to do telepathy. That telepathy was a framework to unify all the instant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, um, did he disconnect? Did I disconnect? What happened here? Oh, lovely. Um, <laughs> hello. <laughs> yeah, it came back. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be two of me for a moment. Um, I don't Sorry know about that. Yeah. Um. So you're talking about. Um, framework, telepathy. Yeah, so telepathy was the thing that was going to unify the um, protocols, the instant messaging protocols. Mm -hmm. And um, 
yeah, the, the, there were backend programs that were talking to the various protocols and at the front end we had a chat interface and then we were trying to write also a video call interface to be able to do video calls with um, yeah without well without using browsers let's say I, I think using browsers at the time wasn't that common to be honest it was more that you had an application running on your desktop that was doing the call anyway the idea was to write a video call client and I started working on that. I took this, the, the Google Summer of Code project and basically that taught me how to use GStreamer, which is a multimedia framework that was I was using for actually uh, doing the video processing and audio processing and streaming. Mm -hmm. And I'm really sorry. It's, uh... <laughs> There's a there's a HomePod in the corner that uh, I never <laughs> use, but for some reason it decided to to speak up right now. <laughs> it's been fine throughout the entire episode just now. Okay, sure. Um. <clears throat> yeah. So I learned GStreamer out of that, yes. and that's how I got into Collabora as well, um, because I knew GStreamer, and actually the guy that was mentoring me was working for Collabora at the time, and there was, I, I guess I was lucky, I was I was there in a moment where Collabora was trying to expand, and they were hiring lots of people, so um, yeah, they, they hired me, and uh, well, shortly afterwards, like a year afterwards, telepathy uh, pretty much died because uh, Nokia died. If you know the story of, of Nokia at the time, it was that they were building a, a phone, they were building a platform, and that was using telepathy, was using a lot of open source stuff, but things were not working for them internally. Um, and mm -hmm. at some point, they they sold themselves to Microsoft and Microsoft killed everything and they said okay we're going to replace it with Windows Phone, which also didn't work. <laughs> so um, yeah, that, so telepathy died and I, I had nothing else to work on at this at the time in Collabora other than GStreamer, um, and so I, I dived more into that, um, and I was. Like I said, I said from from uh, from a small age, I was very curious about things. So when there was something that I I didn't know well enough, I was curious to learn whatever it was thrown in front of me. So GStreamer was thrown in front of me basically, and I, I was seeing an opportunity to work there uh, and make real money out of out of doing open source software, and it was just exciting. So I I learned how to. Uh, to get around with GStreamer. And that's how I got into the multimedia team at Collabora. And that's also how I got into audio. Of course, I did video. I, I still sometimes do video stuff as well with GStreamer. But um, in, uh, well, I was hired in, in 2011 uh, and I was doing GStreamer all of that time. But in 2018, as I, uh, got into the automotive grade Linux project, I started looking into Pipewire and that led me into the whole Pipewire and audio um, work that I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that was, I like that. That was, yeah. that was, that was, a, good, that was a good answer. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's basically my, my, my life story in a, in a like small description, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you've kind of just been involved uh, yeah. in some way with it for kind of a long time now. And I guess, yeah, now, now, now wire plumber, I guess, how does it, how does it feel that wire plumber is basically, it, it's basically the standard session manager across every distro at this point. There's still a, I'm sure there's still some random one out there that's using media session and then you have the distros which will always be doing whatever they're doing but across you know fedora ubuntu arch linux pretty much everywhere it's wire plumber yeah um 
how does it feel? I guess it, it feels good to know that people use your software. Um, but at the same time, I'm never satisfied mm. with, with what we have. I think that it could be better. It could be much improved. Um, and even though it's, it's being used, a lot of people just don't know it exists. Like they use it in the background. They don't really care about it. Right. And also the people who know it exists, sometimes they don't know how to configure it, how to modify it. So that kind of defeats the purpose of it because it's supposed to be something that is easily configurable and easily allows people to change things. Mm -hmm. um, and I see that not only on the desktop, but also on devices. So I sometimes, occasionally I interact with customers that have already adopted Pipewire and Wireplumber in their setups and they are just doing everything wrong, right? They, they don't modify Wireplumber, they don't write scripts, they basically build their own logic on top of it or they all, or they do like other things like using pulse audio apis or jack apis to modify things um, on top which basically sidekicks wire plumber into just being the default that it is on, on desktops <clears throat> um yeah so yeah it, it i guess um it, it feels, as I said, it feels good to have the software used, but I would, I would like to, I'm not, I'm never like, I'm never resting that, you know, it's, it's a good software or it's a good thing to have. Like it, it can be improved. It can be better. Um, yeah.